Hi, welcome back to eRacing GP Global Edition 5. We just had the copper class, if you've just been watching, and uh, we've got the bronze class coming up. Bronze class is in the Formula 3 cars. And um, you can see actually that we have run the copper class, the bronze class, silver class, and gold class. The last race we have today will be the gold class, where we have the pros, coppers, where we have the beginners. Here are the winners from the four categories so far. And you can see that um, Nakib Aslan there is leading gold at the moment. No chassis on. And Bernard Chan is leading bronze, but unfortunately Bernard will not be racing today because he has some issues um, uh, with his rig. And uh, we just saw Copper Class. Kelvin Powell did not win today, but he has actually extended his lead in the championship. Here are the standings for the bronze class um, as you come into the race. Um, Francis Angelo Gonzalez will be looking to try and chip into that lead. So will Axel uh, Nocom from Philippines uh, with Bernard Chan not racing today. But uh, before we, um, and then Teams Cup, this is Teams Cup, Stratus Motorsports leading the championship, Tedco in second, Sim Racing Philippines in third. And then Nations Cup, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines round up the top three. Okay, so we have the, there we can see the bronze class drivers getting ready. We have a good five minutes before we start the race. My name's Alex Jung, by the way, and just below me is Amir Hazik. Um, why don't we watch the gold highlights, which is coming up later, before we get into qualifying. Um, so, here are the gold highlights. We are on board with Inigo Anton as we are underway and Inigo gets off to a solid start. Mika Kimi, who put in a big lap in P2 and Perwin in the pink in P3. Inigo Anton, nerves can sometimes get the better of him but that's a clean start for the Filipino. Two young Malaysians there who we know are quick, Hakimi and Harris, both having a real pop at this one early on ammo. Yeah, indeed. Oh, Josh! Josh, Josh is in the and, and, and who's that dropped off? Oh. Naki Baslam. The championship protagonist here, who's been the bright, mate, never the bright for three times now, would like to actually get one better over Dusby and the rest of the field here. As he goes side by side, coming to the back straight, the easy overtaking maneuver, and the DRS actually play. Uh, Pay dividends for him there. Second place as Harris tries to defend, tries to go on the inside of Tusby. Tusby blocks it, and that might actually be crucial for Naki to make his escape from the rest of the field as well. Okay, terrific from Naki. You, you, you really got to put your hands up to him. Starting in P10, a lot of traffic. We were told, and we've got evidence that it's a difficult uh, track to overtake on. Yet he just eased himself, unseen almost, into P5, and now has manipulated himself into P1. Now he's going to be com under complete pressure from not just one driver, but three. They're going to go three wide here on the back straight. Harris already outside, and look at that, he's getting swamped there by the three drivers who all have DRS. Nakib is still holding on. Harris Efrishami goes into P2 for the first time in this race. Perwin overtakes Inigo Anton. So Anton, having been race leader one lap ago, is now P4. But having said that, look at that. That DRS toe is actually enough for Josh to actually get at the back of him. Now Nakib has to defend for his life here. Unless he just gives way like that. And unfortunately for him, Josh takes the lead of the race. Harris also follows suit. Josh so they... Josh Perwin leads for the very first time. Harris Zephi in P2. Nakib under pressure, not only for P1, but for P4, because Inigo Anton had a little look as well. But Josh Perwin, oh, he looks like he's timed this wonderfully, Ammo. But Perwin leads. Nakib in P2. And Josh Perwin, Ammo has he takes the victory. Nakib clings on to two. Harris Zephi three. Josh Perwin and Naki Baslan down in P2. Who gets away quickest? Mika Hakimi has got away to a very, very fast start. He's up into P3. Mika did well in race number one and then was barged off. Brody Steen. Tadashi was low down as well. Tadashi will be looking to make amends. And the start, though, from Muhammad Khalif and Hakimi Ammo has got them off to a, a 1 2 start. He'll be hoping to avoid that time around because remember, he got swamped by the guys who were in second and third and fourth to prevent the win as Mika goes into the lead on the inside, Khalif. Up at the front, Tadashi may well be making his maneuver on the long straight, indeed he is. Sweeps past Mika Hakimi, we have a new race leader. But Inigo now has the invitation to try and take the lead here as they go through the S's. Look at that, he's using his DRS right now. Through the S's here, onto the grass, he goes, he spins! Oh, it's a half spin, he's gonna spin into the rest of the field! That was not smart at all, actually, sorry to say. Anton should have waited for that. And now, Mika Hakimi goes around the outside and he takes the lead. Mika Hakimi is the new race leader. Inigo Anton cannot believe what he has just done. But you don't write off Tadashi, not yet. And you don't uh, 
give this victory to Hakimi. Not yet. Behind there, Mohamed Nabil. Kalen Chin has got himself up into P4. Tadashi wants this ammo. Tadashi is going to chase this right to the line. But it's Mika Hakimi who takes the victory from Ayman Hakim Tadashi. Nabil, Kalen Chin, Khalif, Ayman Hazik, Nakib ahead of Tazbi. Yeah, it was. There are the gold highlights. <laughs> Some really exciting racing. Um, and we'll see that come up later. What did you like most about that race, actually, Ammo? Uh, it was just the awesome slipstreaming. Unfortunately, we didn't see that in the similar case in E1, of course, because yeah. E1 ran about a few days later than that. But the DTM is probably because the way that he could run closer together with the DRS and everything, mm. it was oh, it was possible to have a great, great race like that. And also the fact that, not to sound a bit biased, but to have both my teammates being first and second was a nice sight as well. Yeah, you're not biased at all, are you? Of course. <laughs> uh, as commentators, we're supposed to be neutral. Um, how, yeah, how are you yeah, finding that going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just only just you know just to put it out there because it was nice to see because yeah, uh, haven't seen a one two in this championship yeah. yet between the drivers, so it's nice to see that that day. Yeah, I know what you mean though. I mean you you I mean you you know all these drivers. Uh, I know all these drivers now. Um, and you you try not to have favorites, don't you? Um, yeah, you, no, you try no. to be as impartial as you can, yeah. but you. You can't, you can't ever be completely 100%. Yep. <laughs> anyway, we're watching Nazir Azman um, going around turn one here. It's quite an interesting track. It's um, tight and twisty, isn't it, Amal? Yeah, indeed. And the fact that normally we see a lot of overtaking normally on the bikes, for example, because like MotoGP, you can have overtaking even up under here, clearly, at least because there's plenty of room for a bike to get around. But if we saw just now in the mm. Kias that some of the cars really had to bite their way through to get positions on track. So... Uh, I think that's just the way to go, to be honest. Unless, of course, uh, you're in an open wheel car like in Formula 3, you might not want to have too many RG bargy moments with the wheels colliding or front wheel yeah. end plate. Sorry, front end plate touching the tires, so they want to avoid yeah. that one. Yeah, I mean, on, on paper, it's not a tight track, actually. It's not a tight track at all. It actually looks a bit open and flowing, but you don't feel that when you drive the track, do you? It's, it's kind of. It's hard to keep it on the track. Yeah, it's kind of like point and squirt, to be honest. You have to point the car and then you squirt on the throttle just to get them through there, so. It's a, it's a it's a dichotomy to be honest. The yeah. track looks easy on paper, but when you drive, it's not it's not as such. Okay, let's uh, ride on board with um, Francis Angel Gonzalez from the Philippines. He's second in the championship with Bernard. Oh, he's got a track limits issue already there, isn't he? Will he have to restart? I think he'll restart this lap. Uh, no, not really, because you're actually not starting your lap lap yet, so he can actually get away with that. Okay. Unless he cut through the final corner completely, then it will be a complete invalidation. So he's yeah. lucky to get away with that one there as he comes across the line there to start his qualifying lap. And I think he's one of the first drivers to break through the timing beam. Yep. Not as many drivers as we saw last time. We only have 18 for this run, but nonetheless, it will still be a great race. It will yeah. be a great race for sure. A few drivers obviously ca uh, cancelled last minute. Um, I think there are a lot of weddings going on this weekend. <laughs> but um, Gonzalez, here he is. He is second in the championship. He's you know, with championship leader Bernard Chan not taking part this weekend, this is his chance to try and really close up in the championship. He needs to start with a pole. And look at that. He's purple through sector one. A little bit quicker through sector one than everyone else. Of course, this is the first lap, so there will be some quicker laps coming up. But he's looking nice and good as he comes through these corners here. This very tight chicane. You go down in first gear just for the left-hander, just to help rotate the car. Um, and now this long, long turn 10. You, I think it's easy flat in a Formula 3 car, but I think everyone else today will have to have small lifts through those corners. Then turn 11 is not really a corner before breaking hard for turn 12. This is a tricky corner to get right, but oh, Gonzalez looks like he nails it. Easy flat through turns 13. Has a small break here, light break through turn 14. Careful not to overcook it through 14 because you got the all important turn 15 here. Oh, he looks like he just about hangs on there, didn't overcook it too much. Um, and he's purple through sector two as well. So, this is looking like a good lap at the moment, isn't it, Amal Hazik? Yeah, indeed. And in fact, that he's going to probably better his time that he did on the leaderboard over the week. So, this is looking for Gonzalez. He's purple for the first two sectors right now, probably because he's also the first driver to break through the timing beam. But with Bernard Chan out of the way for his championship stakes, he's actually going to try to rub his hands in glee and take the advantage coming to the final round of the season as he comes through now. The final corner, the short squirt, all the way up to the line. And currently second because Alan Drake Cruz has taken pole position. There we go. A tenth. In fact, two tenths wow. off. Wow. So he Alan Drake Cruz out of nowhere. In fact, no com goes even faster. Wow. So the battle of the, I don't know, the eight, nine, ten-year-olds. I'm just going to call them cadets. Anyone under 12, I'm going to call cadets. Uh, between Axel Nocom and Alan Drake Cruz. So Nocom on pole the moment he hasn't started his lap. will go with his teammate, 
um, Cruz here, he's in second position and he's only, well, he's actually a long way off. He's half a second off Nocom. Nocom, let's not forget, is third in the championship and um, he'll need to collect some good points today as well. Yeah. But uh, Cruz, seven star garage. Young drivers, they, they all race together as well, and here he is going through turn one. Yeah, but he's, he'll be looking to actually get back to back pole positions, is no con, because he looked so good last time out in Watkins Glen. He just got that track nails out as uh, Alan Drake Cruz then restarts his lap. Five tenths up, he's actually smashing it again. He was actually four tenths faster last time out in Watkins Glen, so he's, the, he's nailed his qualifying efforts after starting on uh, third in the first race, 14th in uh, Hockenheim, then pole position at Watkins Glen, so he's gonna go for back to back. Yeah, so he's restarting his lap at the moment, isn't he? So he's not going to do. Let's, let's follow. Let's go someone in a little bit further down. Well, knock on this, having down, a, literally down there for a second. Yeah, knock on this, having some issues there. Back with Gonzalez, one more corner to go. Is he starting the lap or finishing the lap at this point? I think he's actually gone through another lap because there's no way he would have waited a minute or so to actually get back out. So he's actually on the lap right now as he comes across the line here. Um, no such improvement, I think. So he's gonna go for yet another one, so they can. They can actually get around here faster than what the Ikeas could do because of by virtue of aerodynamics and these cars are actually quite nimble. So uh, they can get at least around three laps in before is like before the talk the clock runs out. So right now at least oh what happened to say uh, what happened to uh, Nokom? Nokom's out. I think Nokom's been disconnected. He's had a disconnection, so he's out of the uh, qualifying at the moment. He need I think you can rejoin. There is enough time. You can rejoin in qualifying. So if you can just sort out his PC. Maybe he can rejoin, but more crucially, it's lost in pole position. And Chester Lamb takes, po it takes uh, his position. In fact, he's gone four tenths faster as well. So that could have easily been no come up in pole position. So uh, the fa fans of Nocom might be absolutely distraught by now, knowing that he's actually out of qualifying. And I think based on the surface, I think he can't actually get back in because race room, certain races, you can go back in. If that, in fact, there's no come right now. His dad was in the room for a second. He should be in, I think. Yes, there he is. Yeah. He's actually back in the back in the saddle. Yeah. But 18th, he has to actually start yet another qualifying lap. Oh, no, he doesn't. Actually, yeah. he, he has won't. not enough time. His t his lap time has been deleted. Yeah, so he won't get a chance to the lap. So he's going to have to start from the back. Of the drivers, only uh, Gonzalez, I think, has enough time to squeeze in this lap. So let's ride on board with him. Let's see if he can improve on his time. Um, we're not getting a sector. Oh no, it's not. Sector two is very messy. Four tenths down. So this won't be good enough to get him on the front row. We feel. And that's very unfortunate for him. But crucially, though, he's gained points on uh, Bernard Chan because he is in third place in the top five. So top five gets points for qualifying. As we look at through the order right now. Um, yeah, it's actually quite crucial right now that he actually has to get those little points as possible. But for Axel Nocom. No points in this particular conversation, even though it looked good for a second, but unfortunately his internet connection has actually failed him. Yeah, well at least he's back in the server. He will be able to start race one, but he's going to have to start race one from the very back in 18th position. And as for the Spanning the looks for him, he's going to have to claw his way up through the order to actually get any more meaningful points. In fact, he's only about uh, 14 points behind Gonzalez in the championship right now, and they both have started all the races so far, so... Yeah. Uh, maybe he could afford to drop points right now in this race so he can put this race in the bin and focus on the final round of the season but that's not why he would want it mentally to actually come into the race yeah and if you have been following ERGP bronze class we've seen Gonzalez and Nockham have great battles over the last three races seen lots of battles between them um, but uh, with Nockham right at the back I'm not sure we're going to see that in race one but like you said maybe race two indeed and uh, I think we're going to go we're gonna go for top twelve for the pole position in 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 the race at the moment. So in yeah. this uh, round for the next race as well is gonna be twelve top twelve. So no com probably try to aim for the top twelve to start on pole position for the next mm. race. Actually, I think I said it to top. Well, I'm not gonna say because people are watching this live stream. Um, it's not top twelve anyway, but we'll soon find out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So keeping everything PNC until the last minute. Mm. So it's a surprise mechanics for a lot of people if people get that EA Sports reference. As we now wait for the five lights to go out here in Aragon. It's a bit of a long wait because it was actually around 15 seconds before the cars actually dropped off the jacks and started the race. There's the five lights. And we are green here at Aragon for bronze. And it's a good start for Chester Lam. Francis Angelo Gonzalez tucks into the, into the rear wing of Chester as he comes through this first corner. Alan Drake Cruz tries to hold around the outside. But it's actually Angelo Gonzalez who has taken the lead. He has taken the whole shot through turn one. And he leads here at Aragon. Second place is Chester Lam. Third is Alan Drake Cruz. Fourth is Nazi Asman. As the field now streamed their way through the first few corners. 
Ah, what a great start by Gonzalez there. We really didn't expect to see that sort of a start, but really, really good job there. Uh, we'll, camera angles losing our drivers at the moment, but uh, wow, they're all over the place at the moment. But uh, Gonzalez, there we go. Gonzalez in first position, just holding off from Chester Lamb. And oh, it's it um, Cruz there looking down the inside into the chicane and Ooh. makes it through. Good move there by the young Filipino. Wow, wait, we've seen a lot of dive bombs from that kid over the first few runs, especially Hockenheim where he had some scent of dreams to actually get his positions and he's done there just now. I didn't expect him to actually get that move done at the waterfall section, but he did. And he's now trying to pursue his fellow countryman Francis Angelo Gonzalez for the win here in bronze. Yeah, Gonzalez, so great first lap for him. Let's see if he's got the pace to stay at the front though. God, four seconds down on, on, on Chester Lamb in qualifying, so you really feel he's got his work cut out. And look at that, Chester Lamb's closed up the gap quite a bit and is he in this oh has a moment on the exit of, of that turn 15 but uh, this long straight really you do see a lot of slipstreaming battles down there and if you look further back to hear the top three right now um they are okay but if you look further back to the guys in fourth position Yevan David there getting overtaken by um Nazir Azman and oh, they're gonna go side by side fight is Nazir under attack from both Adam Amir and uh Yevan David as Nazir breaks very very late and he manages to hold on to position and in fact a further spin in front is Chester Lamb. Chester has actually lost ground so he had a bit of a slight spin. Now he's actually going to fall into the clutches of multiple drivers as Ante Buyan gets a stop and go penalty. So it's unfortunate for him. He's been doing so well in the leaderboards only for him to go through. There he is. Ante actually goes into the pits right now so that's a real shame for him to start this weekend with. Yeah so Chester Lamb there with you, you mentioned you caught that half spin. So he's um, down into the third position at the moment. Um, oh. Don't look, let's look at the timing screens right now because the timing screens are wrong. Nocom is he's been disconnected again. He's not here at all. So unfortunately for Axel Nocom, he, we try to get him back into the race, but um, it's maybe an issue with the internet connection. Yeah, he's gonna throw this race in the bin. Yeah, it, it sucks actually because that's not what you want, especially when you're actually aiming for the championship. But good news for him, this is his one bad round, so he can actually look forward to the final round next time round, wherever it is to actually try and snatch away the championship from the two drivers in front of him. Yep. But looking at the championship contenders right now, this is one of them. Angelo Gonzalez under severe attack here from Nocom's teammates. So Alan Drake Cruz here doing Nocom a huge favor if he could get in front of the Smiling Assassin. Right. So um, just for the guys who are new to EA Racing GP, um, we do do drop points. So between rounds one and four, and this being round four, you have to drop points from your lowest round. So Bernard Chan is not here, so he'll drop round four. And now Axel Nocom has had a disaster today, so he'll probably drop points for round four. Gonzalez, though, he's second in the championship right now. He wants to try and take maximum points to try and close the gap to, to the other two. And indeed, the fact that uh, right now at least, Gonzalez is looking the one who's the healthiest of the lot because he's going to get a whole lot of points here if he could hold on to it. He did qualify in third as uh, Drake Cruz then tries to go on the inside again. Oh, he's really, really... Loves his overtaking news on the inside. He loves his late breaking and unfortunately there a bit of a slight touch as they go side by side Coming up through the final corner up to the main straight turn 15 and into turn 1 as uh, There's gonna be a battle between Nazi Asman and Chester Lam as well. Chester actually lets Nazi through That's all oh, big hit between Alan Drake Cruz and uh, Francis Angel Gonzalez Hopefully didn't get damaged there because that would take both of them out of the race Knowing how sensitive these Formula 3 cars can be as here's Alan Drake Cruz then driving for 7 star garage doing his teammate Axel Nocom a whole lot of favours here if you could hold off Angelo Gonzalez for the win. Wow, that was a big hit. I would be very surprised if there's no damage on those cars. Looking at the timing screens, doesn't seem to be any damage, So, and, and the cars look pretty straight. So both of them surviving at the moment. Um, I wonder if Cruz will get a look at the stewards though. He did have contact with uh, Gonzalez at the hairpin, which pushed him wide. You could argue that he took a position from that contact, um, but uh, we'll have to find out later. Yeah, Bender, you did say about the uh, 730 and 6040 rule because of 50-50 incidents just like that. So whoever yeah. is the one that got the most advantage out of that will probably be the one that will be penalized. But that it, that will be, in this case, Alan Drake Cruz. But you have to look at a case-by-case -case case basis, don't you think, Alex? Yeah, case-by-case yeah, -case basis always goes to the stewards. At the moment, though, Nazir Azman doing a good job there in the third position. We haven't seen him in a podium position for a while, but um, there he is now. Um, he actually... Um, uh, looks after Black Arts Racing. He's the team manager for Black Arts Racing um, in E1. So, you know, it's not too bad in, with driving himself. Indeed. In fact, he hasn't had a podium since the very first race at the Red Bull Ring. So, he'll be looking to actually get this one now. 
as he's running in third. Don't, don't mind Nights of Nocom's name because Nocom is actually out of the race, out of this race at the moment. In fact, he's gone into somewhere in Narnia, or in this case, Aragorn, which is named after a film movie that tried to cash in on the Lord of the Rings franchise. Anyway, Gonzalez back into the lead, just slipstreamed uh, uh, Cruz and just got him nicely down the long back straight. Oh, but he's had a bad exit out of the penultimate corner. And that's allowed Cruz, and Cruz just sweeps through. Cruising back into the lead goes Alan Drake Cruz, and the smiling assassin Francis, Francis Angelo Gonzalez there, patiently waiting here. He looks like he looks definitely in the zone because he well he he did blink for a second there. Normally some of these drivers if they are really focused they don't blink. Right now at least he's not smiling. He's not really blinking that much. He is trying to get actually get this race win, and he's trying to get rid of what is what can be said is a very stubborn driver in the form of Alan Drake Cruz. He's really holding on here to the front. And while they're doing that, both of them are battling. They're reeling in Nazir Azman. So it could be a three-way battle, four-way battle even, if Chastelam could get close. Yeah, great to see uh, Nazir Azman having a good, strong race. We haven't seen, like we said, haven't seen him strong for a while. But he's showing great pace right now, actually. His fastest lap, um, the last previous one was at 55. It's 55-1. He's actually got the fastest lap at the moment. So looking very good there. Further back at the bottom of the top 10 there, we've got Chris Matthews batting um, Adam Amir for seventh position this has been going on for quite a while but back further back whoa look at this scrap between marcus lacambra and oh. uh, gary lynn and um nazir risky ramadan nazir risky ramadan and uh, we're looking at lacambra right now in a in another 37 star garage car so there's three of the drivers in the same team in this particular division as even e evan mccombs i think he's brother to Bra brad mccombs if i'm mistaken he's going wheel to wheel here as uh, we look at gary lynn He's in 10th, holding on to the bottom of the top 10 positions. There's going to be points on offer for these guys up at the 15th. But look at that. The way they're battling is as if they're going for the win. Yeah, good. good oh, runs wide there, doesn't he? Gary Lynn runs wide. That's going to affect his exit out of the turn 15. Luckily, the cars behind him are battling hard. Uh, and here's a bit of breathing space. Wow, wait. So many drivers battling for position. In fact, these drivers are going to battle all the way to Condorlochis, I think, because Condorlochis is the tail end of that particular battle but we're gonna have to well we're actually we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stay this because this is just gonna be too good to miss as gary lind then leads a train of cars coming through the final corner oh there's a bit of a spin that might have been uh yeah that's actually yannick david so yannick has lost it and he will be relegated to 14th he doesn't he doesn't mind he does have to mind drivers for the behind because 15 right now is the last point scoring position and that's the amount of drivers we have left in the race so Lucky for him, he will spare his blushes as we go back to the front end. Alan Drake Cruz holding on for dear life here for the lead. He looks very calm right now, but you make no mistake, his heart might be beating quite hard here, seeing that his fellow countrymen and championship contender elect right behind him. Yeah, Gonzalez is all over the back. This is turning into a really nice battle right now, but Cruz looks comfortable. You can see he was a bit um, unhappy with the contact with Gonzalez earlier on, but he seems to have calmed down. Oof, got, gets a bit sideways on the exit there. Good, good catch. You can see how hard he's working on the wheel. Ah, but look at that. Gonzalez is all over the back of him. Gonzalez now. Dig side by side. And uh, we can watch... Um Ooh, a bit of a touch there from Angelo Gonz... Sorry, from Noco... Uh, not Noco. From Dr Alan Drake Cruz. He actually hit Gonzalez again. And Gonzalez there will probably be a bit crossed by that because that might actually potentially be also a puncture because that was a front end plate of his left of his right side touching the rear left wheel so we're gonna have to watch out for this if that will be enough to cause a puncture because sometimes a small contact like that can cause slow punctures that will ultimately become big punches towards the end yeah see gonzalez in second position he's just not not close enough um from these two drivers go back to the front chester lamb there he's um dropped real far back he's behind sherman singh right now so he's not having a great weekend as we go along yeah in fact um well, he did start on pole position just now. He just couldn't get the run out from the rest of the field. But nonetheless, top five will actually be a good return for him after what? Now scoring points last time out in uh, Watkins Glen. Yep, Gary Lynn there looking down the outside here. Turn 16, all contact between him. And I, I think that's um, uh, Ramadan as well. So somehow they just survive and Gary Lynn holds on to 10th right now. But uh, we know this is going to keep going. Yep, he's gonna keep going until the cows come home. As uh, well, that's uh, was well, spoken to soon there. Ch Gary Lynn gets the better of Nizaris Giromadan, and Condor Lodges gets the better of him. Meanwhile, Chester Lamb here on the back of Sherman Singh. So Sherman now has to look at the rearview mirrors of a fast-charging Hong Kong driver, 
As he goes white there. Ooh, now they hit each other. They've actually hit each other. And Chester Lum actually gets four position. Now, that might have been a mistake from Sherman. Locked yeah. up. Got a bit of wheel spin and went into the pop of him. So, no, probably no Stewart's inquiry needed for that one. As both of them battling for pole position has actually brought in Adam Ame back into contention for fifth place. Yeah, Chester sorry, just for fourth place. Chester went a bit wide, didn't he? And then when he came back, there was had that contact. Um, sorry, Sherman Singh went a bit wide. But uh, at the moment, Chester is, again, no no damage on that car. I would have thought there'd be some damage. Um, again, we still have Axel Nocoms back onto the top of the time charts, but... Please ignore that. That is not correct. Um, it's straight Cruz that's winning the race right now. And we can see him still leading. Here he is in the yellow car, getting a good exit out of uh, turn 15. But Gonzalez there with a great exit out of there. And uh, you can see he just, just goes streaming by um, Cruz. So the, the toe is very strong in these cars. Indeed, and the fact that we thought for a second there he might have the RS, but it's just that it was a mistake by Cruz. And also the fact that Gonzalez actually just had that massive toe that punched the hole through the air for him and he just took the lead. Now then, can he hold on to this lead? Because we've seen in the past, especially with the other seven star garage car of Nocom, that they tend to swap positions quite left, right and center quite often. So uh, this might be the case now because he's pulled a bit of a gap by about six tenths, but might be, uh, I, most, I most might have spoken too soon because that can actually still be a hindrance because the car behind can still catch up. And in fact, the car in third place has caught up to them. So the top three then within each of each other. Yeah, so it's kind of strange, isn't it? We often see a yellow car battling with uh, Gonzalez, but normally that's Axel Nocom. Instead, it's uh, Cruz today, and oh, Cruz is getting very close, all over the back of Gonzalez. You Indeed, and uh, well, Gonzalez. This, sorry, this is just going to go all the way to the end, isn't it? Yeah, it's gonna. It's a oh. bit deja vu, even to the point that it's still the same colours, but unfortunately not the same driver in one of those cars, and uh, for. Oh, Cruz goes under the inside there. Again, he loves his actually late braking maneuvers. And he's done it again to Gonzalez. Another touch to the rear wheel of Gonzalez. I'm just only afraid that he might actually get a puncture from the amount of contacts he has gone through. I think the damage is full. So Gonzalez has to watch his rear tires now. And indeed, watch the contact with Drake Cruz. Not only for the penalty points, but also the damage to the tires. As Oh, again, Cruz into the back of Gonzalez. So Gonzalez mm. there might be thinking that, why am I getting so many hurry ups here? I'm leading the race. Yeah, so Cruz just nibbling, just a lot of contact there with Gonzalez. I, and you're going to have to look at this. I, I, I think Stewart's are going to have to look at this, especially if he ends up puncturing Gonzalez, because um, there's too many, too many touches at the back, I think. I, you can't say it's just a mistake. You've got to say it's deliberate at the moment. But I'd have to say deliberate. Maybe he just misjudges his breaking lines as Nizgariski Ramadan yeah. gets. But yeah, once, a, once yeah, a lap, maybe, once every few laps, but not three times in one lap. In fact, four by my count from this lap. And in fact, Alan Drake Cruz, I think, just gave way back to Gonzalez as courtesy. But as a direct consequence of that, they've actually brought Na Nazir Azman into play. Now, Nazir might actually score his first podium of the season. In fact, I take that back. I thought he actually had a podium in Hockenheim. But it actually, he hasn't had a podium all season. So his best finish of fourth was last time at Watkins Glen. This would be his great opportunity here to actually take a win. Yeah, so there we are. You talk about Nazir Azman. Oh, didn't have, doesn't have a good turn one. But he's all over the, he's, you know, got Cruz inside. You can see Gonzalez just a little bit further up the road. Um, and um, you just got a feel though that um, Drake Cruz, if he could just get in front, he should be able to pull away, but maybe just not able to pull away enough. And Gonzalez just keeps getting in front. This is the last lap though. So Drake Cruz has to get that move done ASAP. Otherwise he'll actually let this one let slip, loose, slip through his fingers. And unfortunately it would not help uh, no comms chance in trying to at least overhaul, overhaul him for the championship. So this is crucial right now for the stake for no comms stake if Cruz can get ahead of Gonzalez. Likewise, Gonzalez will try to actually stay ahead of Cruz to better his chances of winning this championship in light of Bernard Chan not being here right now. So if he wins here, coincidentally, he will actually be tied on points with Bernard at 112. So this is all to play for right now. Yeah, turn 12 here. Yeah. Cruz not touching the drivers at the moment, but you know, tire wear is right at the end right now, so if there's any more contact, you got to feel there's going to be a puncture. But um, yeah, he's holding station at the moment, just half a lap to go, well less than half a lap to go as they come out of turn 15. Who can get the best exit out of this corner? Looks like Gonzalez has got a good exit, we're right on board with Cruz right now. 
And you can see that even though Cruz didn't get a great exit, you can see the slipstream that effects happening, just closing the gap on, on Gonzalez. Let's see if we can get through that final corner. This is going to be dive bombing stuff here. We know that Cruz actually likes to have a dive bomb. Does he have a go at it this time? No, he's not close enough. So Gonzalez then, for sure, has actually taken the win here in the bronze class at Aragon in race one. As, whoa, Cruz then slides his way through the final penultimate corner. But it's going to be the smiling assassin who takes his third win of the season. Yeah, what a great job by Gonzalez. Held off the pressure by Cruz. A lot of contact between these two drivers. But uh, Gonzalez just holding off just at the end. Let's see if we can talk to um, Gonzalez right now. Um, see if Francis is on the line. See if we can get him on the phone and speak to him. Uh, I'm not, I think he's just too, he's too happy hello. at the moment. I'm not sure hello, he, he's hello, no, hello. he even knows we're trying to contact him. Oh, uh, here. He, we can hear hello. him. He's actually talking right now. Ah, yes. Hello. Well, what a great win. That was a great battle between you and uh, Cruz. Yes, it was um, a very, very uh, tight battle between me and Alan. Um, I like um, uh, racing with Alan like this. Um, it's uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> and how do you, I mean, this is perfect for you right now with Chan not here and, and Nokom having a bad result. This really put you right in the hunt for the championship. Uh, I think I'm going to um, do the similar thing on Watkins Glen and um, uh, drive uh, the way I do. Okay, good. Well, it's the uh, top 13 reversed, so you will start on 13 for race two. Well done, Gonzalez. Good luck, right. Francis. Thank you. And I take it back, it is his fourth win of the season, so no wonder he's showing number four. So sorry, Francis, got the results mixed up there with another driver. But nonetheless, this is actually good form for him coming into the closing stages of the season. So with this win right now, he's only 10 points behind Bernard Chan in the championship as we look through the final results for, it's only the provisional race results after race one here at Aragon in the bronze class. Angelo Gonzalez from Drake Cruz, Nazi Asma with his first podium of the season. No come not in fourth, by the way, because he, the results erroneously still shows that. Chesalon fourth, Sherman saying fifth, sixth is Chris Matthews, seventh is Andre Yesen Villanueva, eighth is Adam Condolotis, ninth is uh, Evan McCombs, and tenth, Gary Lynn. So that was the top ten. Now we wait for race two. Yeah, so good result there. Yeah, so top 13 will be um, reversed for race two now. Just randomly decided before we start the server. Um, and that puts Risky Ramadan in, um, in, into pole position. Yeah, indeed. And uh, well, unless, of course, Nocom actually comes back into the server, somehow will actually be on pole position. But don't think so. That yeah, It is Niza Risky Ramadan. And for drivers further behind there, mm. La Cambra, Gary Lynn on the first three positions of the grid. And, of course, right at the back will be the race one winner. Sorry, not right at the back, but right in the middle of the mid-pack will be Francis Angelo Gonzalez. So it'll be interesting to see how he could actually make his way through the pack here in a circuit that has seen quite a few overtakes that you need to really bite your way through and uh, in this case of him and Alan Drake Cruz they just had a f good fight so then five red lights will come on onto the gantry we're waiting here for the starters orders we're gonna see it come up right about now and the five red lights when they go out we go underway for the final time here this weekend for the bronze class at Aragon and it's a good start again for Nizariski Ramadan Ramadan Gets an absolute flyer. He holds on to the lead ahead of Gary Lynn. Turning to first corner as Marcus Lacambra tucks into third. The rest of the field stream through. Oh, they're not going to stream through safely because there's a car that spins in the mid pack That might have been Yannick De Yevin David, I think, because he was running one of the green cars as well. But the rest of the field go through safely coming up to turn four. Yeah, so that's a frantic start indeed. But uh, Ramadan there, good start by him. He holds on to the lead for now. We've not seen him at the front of a race for quite a while. Um, one of the other drivers who we've seen him do well in the RGP, but we haven't seen him do well for quite a few editions. So good to see him up in, in, in the front. Indeed, and uh, well, that's the one Indonesian up in front. Another Indonesian, uh, sorry, another driver in the same colours of car like my, my that spun at the back, and that looked like Chris Matthews. So Matthews then one of the early casualties at the start of the race, but he's pulling a bit of a gap here. Nizar Rizki Ramadan is about seven tenths, and don't mind again, no comms in the race by the way. So sorry to fans of Axel Nocom. He is not in this race. The timing screen seems to be erroneously picking him up. So, uh, disregard that. It is Nizariski Ramadan who leads the way right now. And then second position, Gary Lin there. Gary Lin, who's done a good job there. Uh, he finished 10th in race one. And he obviously had a good start. 
Of course, it says him as P3 because for some reason, Knockom is still in the server, but we know he's not here. So we just have to remember that Knockom's running right now. It's, it's Ramadan in leading, Gary Lynn in second, and Lacambra in third. And Lacambra then looking into the safe stream, man. In fact, behind Lacambra, fourth place is Francis Angel Gonzalez. So he clawed his way well up the order, up to what could potentially be another point scoring, another podium scoring position. As he goes onto the inside of Chester Lam, and he gets the better of him. He's up to fourth now. And Lam then uh, trying to get back at it, but unfortunately, he just couldn't do so. As he, uh, Angelo Gonzalez goes a bit off track there, trying to defend the line against Chester Lam. But Chester has the line on the inside. It's going to be wheel to wheel coming to first corner. Who's going to be the bravest on the brakes? It's Angelo Gonzalez, and he cuts across there to take fourth place indefinitely. Yeah, this, I've got a feeling this is going to be a good battle. We have to keep an eye on this battle because Chester Lam, of course, took pole position, um, but did not have a good race one, and that's why he's way back there. Um, and of course, race one winner there, Gonzalez. You know he'll be he'll be trying to get maximum points today. Indeed, and uh, not maximum, complete maximum points because if he had pole, fastest lap, and the win in race one, and if he could get fastest lap pole in race two, it could be an absolute grand slam. As Chester Lam goes onto the inside, slams into the side of him, and uh, well, Gonzalez actually probably is used to that by now because he had a lot of that from Alan Drake Cruz in race one. Yeah, so hangs around the outside, has the inside for this left-hander. And uh, oof, again, more contact. <laughs> like you said, you must be really used to getting hit from the from behind from the, all these different cars. <laughs> yeah, the, the fact that this time is not from the back of a yellow car; it's now is a green and gold car, akin to the old Lotus colors. So he will probably be sick of actually being hit back by now. But he said that he was used to it, so yeah, probably that's why he actually loves a bit of contact. He probably get a wake up call early in the morning. Through the chicane. Through turn 13 and 14, well, that's a big move, uh, uh, drive there from Lacambra as we now look at Gary Lynn, who is actually in second place right now. Don't mind again, Nocom's name appears every now and then. It's like a computer virus that you can't get rid of at the moment. But he is not in the race. This is the battle for the lead as Gary Lynn then up to the back of Nizariski Ramadan. Ramadan defends in the middle of the track. Can he break in time? Well, Gary Lynn tries to go around the outside there. Nothing do it. He's still in second as the Gonzalez goes onto the inside of Lacambra there with a big dive. You can see it in the rearview mirror is right about there. There he is. Look, Francis Angelo Gonzalez up to third place. In fact, fourth place right here. He actually got the better of Lacambra. But Chester Lam got the better of both of them. And now it's a three green car field right in the front, driven by three different drivers from three nationalities. As he goes on, as Lynn goes onto the inside of Ramadan, they're gonna go side by side here. Oh! Speed for Lacambra. Lacambra has actually dropped it at turn one. Oh dear, shame for Lacambra. He's going to go right to the bottom of the field. But look at this three way, four way battle for the lead. And oh, it's around the outside. Gary Lynn's trying to go around the outside. Not able to do it. And then there's contact on the inside. And that spins Gonzalez. But Gonzalez recovers um, and is still in fourth position. But look how close it is right now between these three at the front. Three yeah, green wait, wait. cars. They're like, they're like a, a tree of hornets or something. They're just <laughs> following each other. It's impossible to tell who's who right now until we click on the name. But uh, in the front, though, it's Chester Lamb that is leading, and someone has gone wide. Wait, I think that's wait, Gary Lynn that's gone wide. Wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I see a yellow car in front there. That's Nocom. Where did Nocom come from? He's actually leading the race. Yeah, look at that. Look, the timing screens don't lie this time. We did, we did say earlier, well, there's no driver out in front named Nocom because he's actually disconnected. But there he is. He's actually leading the race. Where the order did he come from? But we didn't see him from the start. Yeah, we did. He didn't. So where order did he pop up? He has actually come out of nowhere we thought at the time excuse were lying and suddenly we thought like oh that's yellow card but that's lacambra but then that's not lacambra that's actually no com so where no did he came from where did he come from so we need to look back at the timing screen whether or not this is actually true wow okay well that's uh i, I didn't i didn't think you could get back in the server once you've been disconnected from race one but um well maybe he you're right maybe he's back in we're gonna have to look back and and, and see that but at the moment no com looking like he's at front Yep, and it's that. Oh, that's Felipe Massa, actually, that picture that time. So he had a picture with Jean Todt, now it's with Felipe Massa. So the karting commissioner is taking a picture with the potential young driver of the future right there. So that's a nice thing to see. He's changed profile photos as he comes across the line now. So it's actually Axel Nocom who leads. So that's a turn for the turn off for the books. We didn't really see him throughout the start of the race. So out of nowhere, he's like popped up. So some alien activity going on here at Aragon. <laughs> alien activity indeed. Um, we will have a look at it, but at the moment we'll call it as we see it. Knock on in front, Chester Lamb now comfortably in second position. 
Um, Francis got Angel Gonzalez in third position, so he's got past Risky Ramadan as well. Ramadan did a good job being at the front for so long, but now he's down in fourth position. Uh, but just behind him, though, there's a great battle there. Yevin David back up to fifth after his troubles earlier on, and he's in front of Gary Lynn. And Alan Drake Cruz, see them in the yellow car? He's uh, slowly making his way up the field as well. Yep, and uh, wow, wait. I, I, was ho I was hoping that uh, Cruz would actually make, a move, make moves like what uh, Gonzalez is doing, because Gonzalez has actually clawed his way from the back of the grid around 12th place. Uh, sorry, from 13th all the way out to the front. So that's a great, great... Uh, recovery drive from uh, goes on it says Chris Matthews gets a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane um, surprised to see that Cruz actually not has made those kind of maneuvers knowing how he loves to actually give, his, give dive bombs to other drivers yeah we're, we're on board with uh, Risky Ramadan there doing a good job there hanging on to Yevon David just needs to keep it nice and clean seems to get a good exit out of this last corner whoa that's a really good exit out of turn 15 and uh, you can see there that um, it's it's um, Who's that behind this? Yevin David, that's all over the back of Ramadan. Yep, Yevin and Yannick both are in this race, but Yannick is way behind. Luckily, they're in different cars this time, so we can actually tell them apart. As Yevin now tries to actually attack Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan actually goes on the inside, defends well, and Ramadan holds on to fourth place from Yevin David. Yevin will probably try to fight back here coming through the first corner. Is they going to go? Into the slip stream. It's going to be side by side here coming through this corner. Now Yevin actually has the inside line. These are his gear, but has to hold it around the outside again. Can he hold it coming through this corner? As Gary Lynn is watching brief behind him. And they, uh, sorry, that's actually, uh, yeah, it is, Gary, it is actually Alan Drake. Cruz watching brief. Cruz across on the inside of Ramadan. Ramadan is going to potentially lose two positions in one false swoop as they go side by side. They, wow, onto the sausage curve that nearly caught Ayman Hakim in his uh, hot lap. Through Nizar is Kinaman on here as uh, Drake Cruz goes onto the inside of Yevin David and Yevin then protect was who was the attacker now has to become the hunted as uh, Cruz goes into the goes in front of him in fourth place side by side through turn four Yevin David and Alan Drake Cruz again oh is it for the spin behind it as Adam Ame they, we're looking at the battle here through turn eight and nine Drake Cruz holding on to fourth place just about and now he's gonna drop it to fifth place is Yevon David comes out of there on top Wow it's a good job there by Yevon David but of course Cruz is going to come back we know that he's not going to give up and he's going to come strong um, so he will come back at, at them um, but yeah closing the gap right now this is the battle for fifth position we will come back to this battle in a second let's go back to the front though where we have Axel Nocom leading the race by quite a considerable margin eight seconds ahead of Chester Lamb who is now coming under considerable pressure from Francis Gonzalez uh, it's gonna be a great day for the Filipinos now in fact Gonzalez I think well we, we can almost assume that he's gonna be getting a double win if Nocom's uh, somehow com somehow in the lead is not actually in the lead so we had to get a steward's inquiry on that one whether or not he was actually officially in the race but nonetheless Gonzalez then looking out good to actually get a good haul of points in the championship as he goes side by side against Chester Lam he was actually on uh, around the outside there on the uh, AstroTurf as he overtook but that will considered be well, that be considered illegal because he was actually ahead by the time he got into the happen so Angelo Gonzalez provisionally we assume is in second as both drivers go off white in the first corner so as Alex said earlier we're gonna call it as we see it so unofficial right now he is second yeah just call it as we see it at the moment he is second in the moment I, I would love to find out but like you said it's gonna be down to the stewards to see uh, if that's true or not because we don't really trust the timing results because the timing results are giving some very strange results Ooh, in race one as we see uh, Chester Lamb get very sideways out of that right left-hander and uh Speaking of drivers that actually have lost it, we uh, La Cambra actually has a slow puncture. So on our timing screens, he's got a slow puncture. So unfortunately for him, after fighting at the front for quite a while, dropping it in the first corner, and then subsequently has actually got a puncture. So not a good weekend for him. As we look now at still at Francis Angelo Gonzalez, he's actually pulled a bit of a gap from to pretty himself and Chester Lam. So. Chester will probably be settling for third place or second, depending on whether the Stewart's inquiry will actually be in their favor. Further behind, Alan Drake Cruz still attacking Yevon David. Yeah, it's good. Yevon's actually doing a good job. Yevon's not really shown too much pace in qualifying in race one, but uh, he's showing really good pace right now and just seems to be easily keeping Cruz behind at the moment. And of course, Cruz in the yellow car has got Gary Lynn still in close attention. 
Indeed, and uh, Gary Lynn also will be potentially to look at. Oh, that, that that's. Uh, well, it's uh, Adam uh, Kondrolachis. Yeah, Kondrolachis. So Kondrolachis goes off there as uh, we look up further. Uh, Evan McCombs actually gets a, is a big fan of fishery there. There is Sherman Singh. No, that's Sherman. Yeah, Sherman actually lost his position to Kondrolachis. He's recovering now as he goes onto the inside, coming into the final two corners here. Into the heavy break, he's already happy. Does he get a run on? No. Kondrolachis gets a bit ahead. But does he? No. Kondrolachis goes a bit wide. He break outbreaked himself. And Sherman Singh gets back 10th position. Yeah, nice move there. Um, back to that fight there between Yannick David and uh, Cruz. Um, you can see that that's still going on. But uh, Cruz is really, he's got the attentions now of Gary Lynn all over his rear wing. You can see that Gary Lynn's closing down the yellow car of Cruz. Yeah, Cruz went free went from being the hunter to now the hunted or in fact he's still the hunter but he's just in between he's just caught between two lines at the moment and he's between two green cars not similar colors though is Yevon David driving for Stratos and uh, Gary Lin who's a privateer right behind him so they are actually in close proximity to each other they're not gonna get any podium they're not gonna podium here they're well behind uh, chest alarm by about three seconds, yeah. but it's still good points nonetheless for all three of them if they could keep it this way. I have to say it, Cruz is the yellow cheese in, in the green sandwich, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I'm, yeah. I'm watching that brown because that will be in some nice looking brown bread, but nonetheless, it's moldy bread and with the cheese in the middle. As uh, Yevin David then under attack from Alan Drake Cruz again, and Yevin again actually is proven to be quite. Astute in his defending against Cruz. In fact, late breaking as well to actually not get himself, uh, not to get himself dive bomb from the presumably uh, the most enthusiastic dive bomb in the entire grid because he really loves to dive bomb people. This kid. Yeah, but Yevon, I thought Yevon David had a poor exit out of turn 15, but somehow he managed to make it okay. And yeah, that's a really good exit. And, and Cruz is not able to close at the moment. Oh, hang on, we have a change for the lead. In fact, on our timing screen, it says that Francis Angelo Gonzalez has taken the lead again. And no. I don't know what happened to Nocom. Oh, Nocom has... Nocom has been know. disconnected again. Oh, dear. So, nowhere to be seen is Nocom. And that's allowed Gonzalez to inherit the lead. So, that will be a double for Francis Angel Gonzalez. Also, the fact that he had, I think, the fastest lap from that first race. So, looking good here for Gonzalez to actually get a sweepstake of the points coming into the final round of the season as... Oh, that's Chester Long going very wide. And now he's going to lose second position to Ye Yevin David and Alan Drake Cruz. So, what look a bit what would have been a potential point score, sorry podium podium position has been thrown away on the very final lap. That is disastrous to him. And I think he has a puncture. I think he has a puncture. That's why the car is squirming. In fact, he's going off. There he is. That's a puncture for Chester Lam on the final lap. Disaster of him. He touches Nazi Asma on the way out of it. But that's a slow puncture. And that is actually Alan Drake Cruz out of the race as well. Alan Drake crews out of race because of penalty points. Oh, so, oh wow. wow. Everything kicking off in the very final lap of this race. Yeah, so penalty points. He's gone over the incident points. Uh, 50 incident points for bronze, so he's got enough points. But yeah, there he is, very disappointed. Um, Cruz obviously disappointed. But uh, that's allowed Yannick David, Yevon David, sorry, to go way out in front uh, to look at, to make second position more secure. And uh, we have Axel no come back on the screen again, so we are not going to trust the timing screens now. We're going to trust by intuition. And intuition says that Francis Angel Gonzalez is leading ahead of Yevin David. So yeah. that's what we are going to believe right now because the timing screens have gone completely whacked. Uh, Chester Lamb there in third position. Looks like that car is very bent. I don't think it's a puncture, but I think he's maybe got suspension damage because it looks like he's crabbing. Yeah, it looks like he's crabbing down the straights, doesn't he? Uh, look at the rear left tire. I think that's a rear left puncture because the, it, the it, other it, side of the car is actually much it, higher. If it was a puncture, it would be going much slower. I, I think that's a suspension damage. Well, according, according to the time, timing screen, it says incidents he's had a puncture. So I think that's Red. what it would have, I think that's what it is because look at that. The rear left tire is actually slower than, lower than the other, so that's why he's grabbing us. Out of our sight, Francis, Francis Angelo Gonzalez actually takes victory here in race two. A double for the Filipino. The smiling says, and there he is. He's got a couple of little across the line now. He's ahead of Anta Buyan. There he is across the line. It's a double. It's the fifth win of the season for Francis Angelo Gonzalez. And well, it's really deserved for a while. We thought that he was actually second. Second is Yevon David. And third, presumably, I think it's, well, Sherman Singh. Where did he come from? Is it... I thought there was another car in third place, but it is Sherman Singh coming across the line to third. Chester Lam will be in fourth, and after a slow puncture towards the end, he actually recovered it to fourth place, to fifth place. Nazi Asman in fourth, fifth would be um, 
Uh, sorry, fifth, fifth, that will be chest alarm, <laughs> and the rest of, it's confusing right now. The timing screen's gone completely wet, but we'll get the final results, I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, we'll have to talk to the man of the hour, see if we can get hold of um, Gonzalez. Uh, Francis, wow, oh. a double <laughs> win, fantastic, what a great result. <laughs> yes, it was, um, I was, yeah, I was actually caught um, in the RG party in the, the, first, uh, the first lap, and the car doesn't... Uh, steer the way I wanted anymore because I'm running at 50% uh, suspension all the way. Mm, suspension damage. Well, that's a really great result <laughs> to, to still take the win. I think it's your first double win. Um, um, it's the second. second first right. one was in Watkins Glen. You did get a double win in Watkins. That's yeah. well. That's <laughs> You're making it a bit of a special speci speci speciality of yourself right now. Yes. <laughs> so that right now, that puts you in the championship lead. But that's before we consider drop points. I think once we consider drop points, that still leaves Bernard in the win. But uh, congratulations. Yes, thank you. But a double win, two double wins in a row for Gonzalez is putting him well truly on form coming into the final to final round of the season next time out, wherever it is. As don't mind the results on screen, we don't know whether or not Axel Nocom has taken the victory by virtue of the fact that he actually did participate in the race. So we'll, we'll disregard that. So the win, Provisionally is Angelo Gonzalez's second is the Evan David, third Sherman Singh, fourth Nazi Asman, fifth Gary Lynn, sixth is Condoloche, seventh Evan McCombs, eighth Chester Lam, who dropped all the way back after that slow puncture, ninth is one Coco, one Ame, and uh, Ame is one, tenth is Marcus Lacambra, who recovers after his, slow, so his own slow puncture. Yeah. So, wow, that's actually quite a doozy of a race towards the end. Yeah, very doozy indeed. Um, a lot, lot closer than we thought it was going to be. Um, I, I mean, it's a double win for Gonzalez, of course, but uh, did not expect it to play out the way it did. Obviously, we had a couple of ghost cars running around in, in Axel Norcom. Such a shame. Um, and, and we will have to get back to you on the championship points. I think uh, Gonzalez is leading at the moment, but of course, he has to drop points from rounds one to four. And once that comes into play, I think that puts Bernard back in the lead. Whatever it is, it's going to be very close to those between those two. And uh, we can't wait to see how that ends next week in round five. Yeah, they're going to be an interesting championship battle towards the end between those three drivers. Mind mm. you, with no comms pseudo-retirement or alien activity that happened, we're going to have to see whether or not that is still in, the cont in contention for the points because he can drop this round as well. Yeah, that is true indeed. Okay, so we have um, bronze finish for now. We've got silver and gold to come back, come after this. And uh, we'll be back with silver right after this break. Computer is about possibilities. It is an idea made real. with precision. It can make tradition timeless. Pewter evolves. to be free, it can captivate you. Pewter is our legacy, and we're keeping the legacy alive. Royal Slangor, since 1885. 